Good afternoon, Howard Fox. Good afternoon, Ronnie. It's a pleasure to have you on my Zoom interviews during COVID-19. Howard Fox is an international artist and painter who lives in Kalkou. His latest project is called Hotel Utopia, which you can see parts of in his studio in Kalkou. And I'm delighted to have you here. I'd like to ask you three questions, if I may, and you may elaborate. The first one is, which book has influenced you the most at this particular moment? I would say uh, both my favorite and most influential book was Master and Margarita by Bulgakov, which at a certain time in my life, uh, uh, was, uh, I saw it as early surrealism for me and very political. And um, it was a very strong influence in my painting and how I thought about things, both political and artistically and culturally and socially. Thank you. And now, second question, which film has made the greatest impact upon you? I must admit that I am not a film buff. I took a film course, but I am not a film buff. So, uh, actually the film that, uh, that I always remember enjoying the most and scaring the shit out of me when I was a little kid was The Wizard of Oz, which I still find in Chen. Can you tell us why? It's got everything. It's got everything. As, as a film buff would say, it was the first film to use color, that introduced color to the world of film when it went from black and white. When you saw the house of the witch that had fallen on the evil witch of the East, it was gray. From the outside, everything was gray. As they entered into the house, Everything was gray. It was that Kansas gray. Yet outside the windows, as you just passed an open window, you got your first glimpses of color, which was amazing, which I didn't see as a child because our television was in black and white. But as I got older, I saw color coming in from the outside. And then when Dorothy went outside, there she was in a world of color, an amazing color it was. And I found that very exciting. And as for the rest of it, uh, you know, the morality, the, you know, it actually being made in 1939, which was a freaky time historically, there was the good versus evil. Um, and it was just, uh, it was joyous. It was filled with song and humor, and the good were good and the bad were bad, and you had those, those monkeys which were introduced as evil working for the Wicked Witch of the West, but they turned out to be good. They were just following orders. And once the witch's spell was gone, they were good. They were wonderful little monkeys that just wanted to help Dorothy. And, um, and then they got back to Kansas. She clicked her, her, her ruby, uh, ruby heels, ruby shoed heels, and found her way back to Kansas, and everything again was in black and white. I found it just a, an extraordinary film, and I love to watch it with my kids, and if I catch it on TV somehow, somewhere, I still am enchanted by it. Great, thanks. You're Fair welcome. Question. Third question, which political event has influenced you? And I want to say that by political, I mean anything that has happened in the public sphere. Well, there's actually three events. Uh, pick one. It's impossible. But I'll just tell you the three. Uh, one is, um, one is uh, the, the assassination of Robert Kennedy. The other, another is uh, Israel coming into being. And the third one is the French Revolution. Not in that order, but I only, um, 
I only became interested in the French Revolution about three, four years ago after, while painting, listening to Les Miserables, right? Which I always thought was just some goofy, you know, Broadway musical that was full of shit. And then when I heard the book, it was an extraordinary book in an extraordinary time. And I realized that, yeah, I'd heard of Napoleon. I, I'd heard of the French Revolution. I knew bits and pieces about it, but I had never actually looked into it or read about it or studied it. And it became um, a field of study for me for about two, two and a half years. I started reading about Napoleon. And, you know, one of my favorite paintings of all time was uh, The Death of Marat, which you find in the Louvre. And I just thought it was an extraordinary painting. It was, you know, as paintings go, it was, it looked simple, yet the, the painting of the flesh and, and the, the way the figure was slumped. And just its use of color, David's use of color, I would just, that was a painting that mesmerized me in the Louvre. And in studying the French Revolution, I realized that Marat was a real prick. That if anybody deserved to be killed, it was him. And he ended up being killed by the daughter of somebody he had put to death at the guillotine. And, uh, I don't like the guy, but I still love the painting. But in learning the learning more about the, the French Revolution, it's, it's just a such an extraordinary event, and it actually had a great influence on history. It gave us Napoleon, who was also another prick, but again is is just this incredibly magical and, and influential character in the history of the world. He actually reinstated slavery after the French Revolution and got rid of it. So, uh, and actually, it was the first time in history that anybody had gotten rid of slavery. And then he brought it back. But the French Revolution is very strong. And of course, being Jewish and a Zionist and living in Israel, the founding of the state of Israel after 2,000 years of diaspora is, is a pivotal, pivotal event in world history. And then the assassination of Robert Kennedy was something more between me and my father. We were in Toronto and we were watching the California primaries take place. And Kennedy had just given a speech and jokingly, it was already 12 o'clock, but it was only nine o'clock in California. So everything was still happening. I said to my father, wake me up if uh, something happens to Kennedy. And at three in the morning, two in the morning, my father woke me up and said that he had been assassinated. And um, that was a very powerful moment. Not sure how much it influenced history, but it was a powerful moment for me. Thank you. I enjoyed the way you, you turned uh, the conversation onto art, which is your expertise rather than books and films. So thank you for that. Uh, well, Bulgakov, Bulgakov is uh, what I found interesting about Russian. I've always liked Russian writers. Not all of them, but I like Dostoevsky a lot. In, uh, and Bulgakov, <laughs> but what I found about Russian artists, what Russian writers was their books felt like food. I always felt I could taste the book. And Bulgakov wrote in such a manner that I not only could taste his words, he just described his descriptions of, uh, of, the, of the death of Jesus are extraordinary. You know, having living here and reading the book, at, reading the book before I had lived here and after I lived here, I realized you could taste the dust in the air while reading Volgakov. And just the pictures, everything from his, from his descriptions of heat 
emanating off the off the off the fiery ground. It's just extraordinary. So yeah, that that book that book was a very visual book for me. And um, and the film was a visual thing for me. It wasn't just a story of Dorothy. It was how it was shown, how it was depicted, the colors used, just everything from the castle, going from the castle of the Wicked Witch, which was all the dark grays and browns and blacks, and making your way across the poppy field to the Emerald City off in the distance. It was, fuck, it was just an orgy of color and an orgy of, of beauty and everything from the dark, to the extraordinarily vibrant. Great, thank you. To and we're both wearing black shirts. Yeah, yes. Yes. To, to conclude, is this, is this something you'd like to say? Some about kind what? Of statement about anything is a farewell. It's a farewell. Um, I think we should start appreciating what we have a hell of a lot more than we are at this time in our existence. Because I see a lot of being, I see a lot of manufactured hate taking place. And um, more than anything, I fear the mob. And I think we should just start appreciating that our lives are extraordinary. Our freedoms are extraordinary. And we're living in a beautiful world. So let's enjoy it a bit. A little less hate. Let's just enjoy. Great. Thank you. What a wonderful message of hope and optimism. Thank you very much for that. I am actually optimistic. You are. Well, thank yeah. you, Art Fox. You're welcome. See you soon thank in you. the flesh, I hope. We don't live too far from each other. <laughs>